Shizuru is one of the most attractive 2D images of all time and she's trusting this balloon bag to make her dream movie. The most important thing in her life, in his sticky fingers. He's like, I promise I can do it. Film is my passion. All this guy's passionate about is writing disgusting fanfics, powered by Monster, with a trusty Kleenex by his side. I can practically hear the keyboard crying in pain. He consults an expert in the field, and he tells him his script is dog water. Kazuya's like, Wait, you didn't like the part where the main girl dips her foot in mayonnaise? He tells Kazuya, you better find a way to make some money, or this film ain't happening. He goes home to his pretend wife, and tells her they might need to start selling her bath water. As she's contemplating whether or not to make it drinkable, Kazuya is squeezing on the rail, firmly deciding he will buy 50% of her inventory using his parents' money. But y'all realize this is Rent-A-Girlfriend season three though, right? That means we're gonna need to add another useless, I mean, oh, <coughs> useful character into the mix. Turns out she's the next door neighbor. She assumes by the way Kazuya's pants look, they're passionate lovers, which makes Chizuru sick to her stomach. Kazuya immediately says something stupid, and Chizuru's like, yeah, I think we should stop chatting by the balcony. There's something repulsive about talking with you. Ah! As you all have probably figured out by now, every single girl in this anime has something wrong with them. Whether it be their taste in men, everything, being too gorgeous. So the question is, what's wrong with her? Anyways, Kazuya is back in the dungeon, writing a script where a character is forced to watch two dogs procreate. He starts thinking about Chizuru's grandma, and his whole body starts to stiffen for some reason. His phone goes off. It's Chizuru. She wants to come over. Now. The amount of fluid Kazuya's body produces in a mere matter of seconds is astonishing. Kazuya quickly has to hide his moist magazines and spray some Febreze to mask the smell of milk coming from his shoes. She immediately lets it be known that the only reason she's there is to get an update on the cinematic masterpiece he's making for her. The balcony chats are over. From now on, they're only talking in his room. She puts her hair in a ponytail and they get down to some serious business. Assuming Chizuru can take 15 baths a day, they will have gallons of bath water in no time. Kazuya has bought bathwater from a various amount of streamers, so he knows the market like the back of his parents' credit card. <laughs> and even though she would hate to admit it, Kazuya's natural knack for business is getting Chizuru excited. Chizuru's grandpa was so supportive of her dream to become an actress, so she will do anything to make that dream a reality. <laughs> anything! Even if that means running her water bill up the roof or working with a professional bag of pudding. Meanwhile, Kazuya is sweating through his shirt because the girl sitting next to him is not his mom. They need a cover photo to entice the lucky bathwater buyers. And boom, I think they're gonna crash the website day one. Kazuya starts having some second thoughts. After all, would it really be okay to let the public have access to his wife's bathwater? He starts throwing a tantrum and is on the verge of tearing up. Pitying him, she reminds him that she will act out anything he puts in the script, word for word. And I mean anything. He's like, um, really? Anything? And she's like, <laughs> anything. Millions of scenarios involving feet, grape jelly, rabbits, baby bibs shoot all through Kazuya's mind in an instant. Chizuru's unwavering confidence in her film creator made him feel so encouraged, causing him to blush at the idea of the masterpiece they would make together. All of that jiggling and sweating caused his tummy to make a sound. So Chizuru goes into his kitchen and decides she's gonna whip him up some home cooking. All of Kazuya's senses are moving at a thousand miles per hour until Chizuru's like, ugh, why 
is your fridge full of empty milk cartons? And why are they warm and not cold at all? Kazuya bangs against his head. The opportunity to eat her home cooking was forever lost. All because he had to have fun with himself a few hours earlier. But then she's like, all good. I'll go grab some ingredients at my place and whip you up something. Dinner is served. Kazuya is looking at the food and her a bit weirdly though. He eats it really slowly and vigorously sucks on the spoon with every bite. And the whole time he keeps on making these weird sounds with his tongue and starts breathing heavier and heavier. Chizuru feels so uncomfortable and wants nothing more than to leave immediately. Then he starts staring directly at her as he starts making even more loud noises with his food. She's like, all right, I need to leave. As she's about to leave, Kazuya utters, I'm gonna spend the rest of tonight enjoying your dish. Chizuru doesn't know what to say. That wasn't even her cooking. She found it in the dumpster outside and threw it in her microwave. But he still cared so much about it because he thought she made it. As she begins to exit, they both find Ruka on the outside of the door. Ruka is basically in love with this balloon bag. I don't know why, but she is. So of course she is furious to see her greasy lover in the same room as a supermodel. Kazuya tries to explain himself, but whenever he makes physical contact with any woman other than his mom, his entire brain shuts down. So she starts ripping into Chizuru instead, telling her she broke the rent-a-girlfriend code. That code states you can go on a date with any disgusting pervert, so long as you leave early, charge double the intended price on his credit card, and make sure he walks home alone ensuring he will spend the whole night smelling his hand. She forces herself into the room and gets a view of the omelet, the tissues, the bag full of tissues, and the greasy pillowcase. As the smell of milk begins to fill her nose, tears run down her face. Kazuya hits Ruka with the, it's not what it looks like. But Chizuru interrupts and says they need to have a three-way talk together. <laughs> Little did they know, their neighbor heard the entire conversation. She's wondering what in the heck a rentable girlfriend is. She's sick and tired of spending her days working at Burger King, feeling those thirsty customers staring at her name tag, pretending like it's hard to read her name. <laughs> That's disgusting. She's tired of that, and she's ready for some of that little baby money. Back inside the apartment, Chizuru is trying to defuse the situation. She's explaining to Ruka, all they were doing in that room was having a elaborate business conversation about selling bathwater, and that she will never ever again cook for her man ever again. Ruka's still pretty bothered, so Kazuya drops to his knees and begs her to not spit on him again just like she did the last time she was mad at him. Ruka says she won't, but on one condition, she gets to help with the movie too. They are both taken aback by this request. Ruka does not like the idea of them being alone together. Chizuru tries to explain that she would rather lick her uncle than get anywhere near Kazuya romantically, but Ruka doesn't buy it. Kazuya's heart is racing. These meetings are the only time he can smell Chizuru in a condensed area, which really allows him to soak in all the flavor. He does not want to give this up. However, Kazuya has never won an argument in his life, and that holds true here too. After crushing any chance Kazuya had to get to touch Chizuru without spending money, she has the audacity to ask Kazuya Whose cooking do you like more? Hers or Chizuru's? This guy's bewildered. The only thing Ruka has cooked for him is cereal, and she doesn't even use chunky milk like he has asked her numerous times. Kazuya wants to say the omelet so bad, 
but he knows if he does, Ruka will drink all of the bath water before anyone can buy it. <sighs> he gives in though, and he tells her he finds her home-cooked cereal delicious. Ruka has spent years trying to make her signature dish correctly, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. So she gives Kazuya a warm embrace as tears begin to form. Kazuya is actually allergic to cinnamon, but it's all good. He just puts ointment on his rashes afterwards, so like, sucks to suck. Feeling a strong sense of superiority, Ruka shoots a glare at Chizuru, who truly doesn't give a flip whether or not Kazuya liked what she found in the dumpster outside. Chizuru abruptly leaves, but for some reason, as she's standing outside listening to Ruka spit on Kazuya, even after she said she wouldn't, she feels a sense of envy. Look, even if she found the omelet in the garbage, she still cooked it in her microwave. She still served it on her plate. And she still put some of her toenails in it. There is no way she could have lost to Ruka in a cooking competition. Ruka can't even read, let alone cook. As she wanders back into her apartment, she decides she will put Ruka in her place once and for all. Hey, ooh, I hope y'all enjoyed. I'm still figuring this new style out. Please hug the like button, comment your favorite cereal. Y'all have a blessed day.